Uh, let me start first with uh, some words for uh, uh, a story from the Bible. Story from the Bible. Uh, this is about Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. Now, uh, if you remember, uh, after Rehoboam, Solomon and Rehoboam, uh, David was pure in his heart toward the Lord. And he really set a very, very high standard, good standard uh, in serving God. His heart was pure. But uh, the kingdom of Israel waned starting from Solomon. And then when it was passed on to Rehoboam, the nation was split into two, Judah and Israel. The ten tribes of Israel have their own kings. There are several coup d'etat, and none of the kings really passed God's standard. All were evil. But among the kings of Judah Naman, there were many kings who are good kings, but they are also kings that are bad. After several generations, we come to a king whose name is Hezekiah. Hezekiah is a good king. Okay, now let me share with you some of the Bible verses uh, okay let me take this off uh, Hezekiah's records were recorded in 2 Kings chapter 20 and onward, uh, and also in Isaiah 38, and also another part in Chronicles. Sabi dito, King Hezekiah, who is a very good king, very good king, not as good as David, but he is considered a very good king because he turned his heart toward Jehovah. Pinagtatanggal niya lahat yung mga Asherah, lahat yung mga idols uh, na sinasampalataya ng mga Israelites o ng mga, ng mga Jews, mga people of Judah. He continued on the kingdom of Judah in the line of David. He is a good king. But one day he became mortally ill. Nagkasakit siya. And Isaiah came to him, the prophet Isaiah, and said to him, Thus says Jehovah, Put your house in order, for you are about to die and will not live. Mamatay ka. Hindi ka na mabubuhay. So, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to Jehovah. He prayed to Jehovah. He's a person who knows Jehovah and has some experience of Jehovah. He wept many tears. Then the word of Jehovah came to Isaiah saying, Go and speak to Hezekiah. Sabi mo nga kay Hezekiah, That says Jehovah, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. I will now add to your life 15 years. This is a man who has experience of God. He has experience of God. Wag mo sabihin na wala siyang experience kay God. Meron siyang mga experiences of God. Some charismatic, some Pentecostals, have experience of God. They get people healed. Totoo yun. Of course, some are shows, fake, but many must have real experience of God. Hezekiah experienced God in a way so marvelous. God added to him 15 additional years, healthy years para mabuhay. And then God says, I will deliver you and this city from the hand of King As of Assyria. And I will put an enclosure around this city. Papalikiran po ang city. Yeah, with my, obviously with my care. And this will be a sign from Jehovah to you that Jehovah will do this thing which he has spoken. Bibigyan pa kita ng isang palatandaan. Now, this means really, hindi lamang kita papagalingin. God Shows us his reason. Gagaling ka, Haring Hezekiah. 
for my kingdom, for my city. Gagaling ka. Hindi ka lamang gagaling, kundi ang bayan mo, ang nakaharian mo, ang city na yung capital, Jerusalem, will be kept away from king of Assyria. So you see, God does not only heal him, God cares also for his own kingdom. And to have a sign, sabi niya, I will cause the shadow of the steps which has gone down with the sun on the steps of Ahaz to go back 10 steps. So the sun shadow went back 10 steps on the steps on which it has gone down. Ibig sabihin, umurong ang araw para lamang sa kanya. Wow. Mayroon ba sa atin nakapag-experience na ano? Na umurong ang araw para sa atin. Wow. This is such an experience of the Lord. Tapos, gumaling na siya. Gumaling na siya. Praise the Lord. Gumaling. Hallelujah. Diba? The king of Babylon sent letters and gifts to Hezekiah. Isang araw, king of Babylon sent ambassadors and gifts to Hezekiah because they have heard, or heard the wonderful news. Na, Here's a king who has been sick and he got recovered. And Hezekiah was so glad that he showed them his treasury. Sinamanya, binuksanya using the key of David, the house of David, and open up the treasury. Wow! Here are the gold vessels. Here are the silver vessels. Here are the gold shields. Amen. Armory, everything we showed to them. And God was not happy. God was not happy. Show off. Why do you have to show everything? Na out of focus yeah. Na out of focus. Impure na rin. Impure. Pride and ambition set in. Pinagmayabang niya ang kanyang treasury. Amen. Impure. Pride set in. One impureness is pride and ambition. Right? And then, secondly, he's out of focus. Hindi naman niya trabaho yung ipagmayabang yung mga treasury. Those treasury are for Israel. Israel. God kept this treasury for the kingdom of Israel. It's is not to show Babylon, not to show other people. So then Isaiah the prophet came to the king of Sky and said, What have they seen in your house? Ano ba nakita nila? Ano ba pinakita mo? Sabi ni Isaiah kay King Hezekiah. And Hezekiah says, They have seen everything that is in my house. Lahat ipinakita ko. Walang anuman sa aking mga bahandi, sa aking mga uh, treasures na hindi ko ipinakita sa kanila. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, The days are now coming when everything that is in your house and that your fathers have laid up as a treasure unto this day will be carried away to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says Jehovah. Isang araw, pupunta rito ang Babylon. Bibihagin kayo at bibihagin na lahat mga treasures na nakita nila. Hindi lamang yun. Mga treasures for the house of God, treasures for the gods of God will be taken away. Hindi lamang yung mga material na possession. He says, they will take away some of your sons who will issue from you. Ang mga anak mo, yun iba sa kanila. They will also be taken away. They will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Eunuchs, servants in the palace, and of course, castrated. They will never bear children anymore. They will never bear children anymore. Hezekiah, your sons will never bear children anymore. If it happens, the line of David will be point finished. All the treasure will be taken. That means the kingdom of God, the house of David, will end. Period. Tapos. David's house will be finished. God's kingdom through David will be gone. All the treasures kept for me, for my house, Jehovah says, will be taken away. And even your children will become servants of the world. Servants of religion. Servants of Babylon. 
they will be castrated as you know they will never bear children anymore very much like many of christianity today the brethren are selling their meeting halls because all the ones meeting are old old people their children are gone to other denominations or their children are gone to the world taken captives and this is what Hezekiah says. This is what Hezekiah said. Listen to this word. The word of Jehovah which you have spoken is good. 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 All the goods will be taken away. It's good. Good that Judah, the kingdom of Judah, God's kingdom of Judah will be finished. It's good. Good. The words you have spoken is good. When your sons are taken captives, when they will no longer bear children anymore. He says, the word of Jehovah which you have spoken is good. He said, moreover, indeed, there will be peace and truth in my days. Because all these bad things will happen after me. After me, hindi mangyayari ito habang akong hari. Yes, mabibihak sila, but that will be after I die. Yes, the kingdom will be finished. That is after I die. Amen. All the treasure will be taken captives to Babylon. Yes, that will happen after I die. But while I'm still living, I would have peace and truth in my days. This is what the sky says. Good. A person who has experienced the Lord, even God's healing, can be out of focus, not caring for God's purpose and plan and economy. A, purpose, a person who has experienced God so much that God would even cause the son to withdraw 10 steps is so out of focus. He forget that he is a king for the kingdom of God. That God established him for the kingdom of God. I ask myself, I am also an elder in a church. Why did the Lord have mercy upon me, show me mercy, and put me here as a serving one? It is not for me that I will be healed alone. It is not for me that I would have peace alone. It is for God's kingdom on the earth. It is for the church. And remind you, the church is not just an organization. The church is the body of Christ. Mercy. Great, great, great grandson. Pero walang kinalaman sa kanya. The Lord mercifully raised up another king. And he did that what was right in the eyes of Jehovah. And walked in all the way of day. If it is fine and did not turn to the right or to the left. Praise the Lord. The Lord raised another king after them. His name is Josiah. And he did that was right in the eyes of the Lord. Walk in all the way of his father and did not turn to right or to the left. During the reign of Josiah, Hilkiah the high priest found a book of the law in the house of Jehovah and gave it to Shaphan to read it. And Shaphan the scribe reported to the king saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book. And Shaphan read it aloud before the king. And when the king hears this word of the book of the law, he tore his clothes like scissors. For so many years, nawala na pala yung aklat ng kautosan. The book of the law was lost. That's why they do crazy things. It's because they missed the word of God. Now, Josiah found, somebody found the book again. But isn't this strange? You must remember in Deuteronomy 17, the Lord instructed Moses to instruct all the leaders and even future kings. That when one day, you become king. You must write all the law. Read it. Let it be your guide. 
and pass it on to your child. And your child who will become the king must again write the law and pass it on to the next one. Amen. And then the next one must write the law and obey it and follow it. That Josiah will suddenly one day found the book and cried. That means for many years, this book was not being passed on. Brothers, sisters, as parents in our house, we have a job to do. We need to be able to pass on not only the Bible to them. We have to pass the open word, the interpreted word, the word the, that help us through ministry. Oh, brother me, brother Lee, and now continued by the many blending brothers, explaining to us the central line, the focus of the word of God, God's economy. We must pass on this objective knowledge to our kids and at the same time pass on the subjective experiences. Lead them to experience the, all these things. It is our job as parents and the serving ones in the church. Isn't this also our job to pass it on to the next generation? We should not be contented that we are happy in the church life right now. The next generation should not go to Babylon. They should not be captivated in Babylon. The next generation should not become servants. Our children should not become servants of the world. Our children should not be castrated and become fruitless, barren. They must continue to bear fruits for the world. Doing nothing by way of selfish ambition, or by way of paying glory, but in holiness of mind, considering one another more excellent than themselves. We have a job in line of pureness and focus. We may have to teach our children, our young people, something. Amen. Not to have selfish ambition. Brothers, it is really impure to find in the flame the selfish ambition of our children. Go earn more money. I'm raising you up to study so that one day you will become rich, very, very rich, so that you will not have a life similar to mine. You can live in big houses. You can have big cars. You can have people will look up to you. And then at the same time say, go to the meeting, go to the meeting. Amen. Go to the full-time training. Go to the Training, amen. Love the Lord. We are for the Lord. We are for the Lord. We are for the Lord's recovery. And my own dreams of having a good house. We are for the Lord. We are for the Lord. We are for the Lord's recovery. And also that people will look up to me. What is this? We should not instill in the minds of our young children these things. Vain glory, but rather lowliness of mind. And teach them to consider one another more excellent than ourselves. No, I'm the best. I'm number one. Huh? Suddenly I become number two. He's number one. I must find ways to pull him down. This is not Christian life. We are wrong if we do not care for our children. It is the parents' responsibility to ensure that their children turn out right the right way. Psalm 1273 says, Behold, children are the heritage of Jehovah, the fruit of the womb, of the womb a reward. God gave you your children as your inheritance, a heritage. But this heritage is also at the same time the heritage of Jehovah. He's not only yours, he's Jehovah, he's for God's kingdom, he is for the church, he is for God's economy. He or she is of Jehovah. You are taking care of them. Be sure that they are molded right. Not instilled with self-ambition, not, self, not instilled with self-pride, not instilled with self-seeking and self-glory. We need to, parents must help their children to have proper aspirations. Proper aspirations. Pro 
teach them to be happy, not to be rich. Teach them to be useful to the society, to the Lord, and to the church. If they ever they study medicine or engineering or whatever that one is, it is not just to get rich. You don't become a teacher to get rich. You don't become a doctor to get rich. You become a doctor so that, yes, you would have a comfortable life. Amen. So that you would have more time for the Lord, some money for yourself and for the Lord, and also help people so that you may lead them to the Lord. How parents live affects the aspiration of their children, and they are watching us. If they see us struggling, fighting, belittling others, insulting others, Amen. Yes, brother Alex. Si brother Jewel. You love the Lord, pero wakang magim full time. Then we are, what are we instilling to our children? Amen. Parents must learn to channel the ambitions of their children in the proper direction. We yourself need to be pure. They are watching us. Amen. I am for the Lord on Sunday. I am for the Lord on Lord's Day. I am for the Lord on Friday. But the rest of the day, they see you. Amen. Running after this, running after that, or selfish ambition. Amen. Lord, may the Lord really keep us pure. Amen. Let us also help. Our children should have ambitions. We don't want children to be ambitionless. But they must have the proper direction in their hands. Amen. Many parents cultivate their children's pride. Encourage them to go after vain glory by heaping praises upon them in front of other people. We do not need to hurt their self-esteem. Do not hurt their self-esteem. But neither should we point out their pride. Amen. Make them feel, oh, wow. Mm, 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 mm. So when someday they go out, they go to the church, they also feel like they are, mm, mm, mm. everybody should listen to me. I told my tate, my nanai, my lolo, my lola, everybody listen to me. So now I, the church body must listen to me. We should not wear up our children. Today. Neither are young people this way. In like manner, younger men. Be subject to elders and all of you. Gird yourselves with humility toward one another. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The Christian needs to know how to appreciate others. It is easy to be victorious, but it is hard to accept defeat. When our children are defeated, we need them to accept with grace. It's okay to be defeated. Just rise up. Don't pull down others with you. Be happy if the others are doing well. Pray for them. Encourage them. When you are defeated, don't be sad. Rise up again. Doing nothing by way of selfish ambition or by way of vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, considering one another more excellent than yourselves, not regarding each his own virtues, but each the virtues of others also. Teach them to appreciate others, to support others. Amen. From their youth, we should give our children a chance to make their own choices. You know, if we are going to train our young people to do things, we must also give them time and things to make their own choice. We should not make any choice for them. In order to help them to make their own decision, guide those for them, or else it will be impossible. They will also grow up in your church, will grow number. I'm speaking to the biggest church in the Philippines.
But even with the 1,500 is not enough. If the Lord will bless us, there is not for a church. The Lord can raise 10,000 people. Must bear up the responsibility. They need to be perfected. Your children, as well as other children, other young people, all need to be trained. Not only the training center. The training center teach them to cook. Amen. But in the church life, they cook and learn. Amen. They really cook and learn. So let us pick up this burden. You are a big restaurant. Pwede kumain ang limang po. You have five cooks and ten workers. But if the Lord were going to make you a restaurant that could feed 5,000, then you need 50 cooks and maybe 100 waiters. So train our young people. Amen. Brother Joel, sorry to use up your time. Amen. You may continue. Okay. Amen.